black folks and what we're going to do is since the field of view is flat okay now yes there is infinite space okay that anything you see black there that there's nothing now there could be since space is infinite outside of even the milky way galaxy we can even see stuff outside the milky way galaxy okay in these shots in the darkness of space okay and let me just basically i'll scoot over and then we'll go up here whatever size oh my god i got 275 i got for size right now okay so no matter what we've been finding this planet here which we know since it's so far away from A, and you're going to be know that when we go back down looking at the comet and so forth. And what we're, this is just going to be a short video, and actually, yes, yeah, so it's going to be short because what we're going to do is a computation of distance because it's moving away from the camera no matter what because it's moving above the one and moving off out into space, whether it's moving this way or straight away, which is not moving straight away because you know when you see it and you watch the last two videos, okay? So what we're going to do is a stretch of distance across the flat screen can give us a ballpark ballpark speed. And also a good measure too is when, you, when you've got it hitting play and you see the speed. Now we could get the down to the Nats ass because it looks like it's pretty much dancing at the same speed across space as the CME that's coming off the sun. Okay, uh, I'm not going to hit play yet, but I'll hit play and give you the 24 hour period of play. But we're at the 2329, pretty close to the end of the footage. Now what it is, is, it's about this distance right here, okay? And then I'll make uh, a screen print, and we'll take a shot, and you'll see that the, basically when you watch the footage that, and you can watch the last two videos to see that the idea that I stayed with the 26th, because you can see the footage on the 27th, and maybe you can probably pick it up on the 28th of eyesight too, and I do have the 28th footage I believe too, but I'm not too worried about that because it doesn't change speed, it's, it's hauling ass pretty good. Uh, basically, it could be a falling star. There's a possibility of that. But basically, I call it a close to light speed or faster. But I, I basically, the last video, I'm going to basically, the one before this, I basically state it as close to light speed. Uh, because basically, it is going light speed uh, close to it. Because the idea of this CME comes across at pretty darn close to light speed that comes off of the sun. Okay? So uh, we're going to check out some light speed action and give you a distance on it because the idea we can show and get the speed by the distance by calibrating the distance pretty much about right here is how far it comes in 23 hours, okay? Because basically that comet's hidden here in 23 hours. And uh, I'll go down and hit play, and we're going to computate this angle distance of it that it does pretty much. And I'll lock it in, and we'll, we'll calibrate it from what we know the distance to be factual actual, because I'll get I'll be able to have a laser distance of how far the Mercury is from the Sun, and it is pretty close to the gap that we see from the Sun to Mercury, because basically the Sun's over here, so we have a little bit to play with. We even can go with the gray fringe over here of the center of the Sun, and even worst case scenario, we can go from this distance all the way to the frame of the computer screen all the way over to Mercury. It's still a good enough ballpark to give us a figure that will look because we will calibrate from the fringe of this shot coming above the one and to where the comet ends up at and I'll give you a pretty doggone re believable ballpark speed of what we got going on with this comet okay so basically I'll hit play and I've got it at the speed that I've got it at and it's on reverse right now but so basically you're going to see the comet coming back down to the one I didn't even think about doing that, but this is going to work out pretty good. You're going to see this comet coming back down to the one. Here it comes to the one, and then it's going to come down, and it's basically, actually when it starts, it might actually start below, uh, beside the one, and we'll see at the zero hour of where it's actually at, because it's going to be coming back down towards the one right now, right on top of the one, the number one. And it might actually, it's kind of hard to tell whether it's at the edge or not, but it's a ballpark good enough that when it starts, it starts about right here. It doesn't go any farther this than this in the 24-hour period. Okay, it doesn't go any farther than this. So we're going to make a measurement of this and at an angle like this down to the 1. And you can see where it ends up at when you follow it. And we'll hit forward. And you're going to end up seeing that the comet comes up. And at 23, 2400 hours about there. So basically we're going to go from there 
down so I'll freeze at the 2300 hour about right there and as we come across basically straight along with these two stars here is pretty much the distance that it ends up coming because it ends up coming that high in the 2300 hour mark okay so we're gonna go this distance and we're only gonna go to the inside of the frame right here so we'll come along and we're going to take a picture at 2300 hours right above these two numbers because that's where it ends up at and it's in conjunction with here so we'll get a ballpark and then we'll go to the complete angle from there straight up from along these two big stars or planets or whatever the hell they are right here these three way off they could be galaxies for, for, for the infinite shot that we get okay so right along these here and then right above the two nine so basically right here and then at an angle down to the one and we're going to get a distance because we're straight along with those stars right to here so we're going to get a uh, take a picture and get a and get a draw a line and make a distance and get that distance the same size as over there by the sun in, in mercury and get a good speed of what that object's going all right and you can't probably see the comet worth the who down here, but you'll see the video, two videos before this that basically I showed you the comet. And you can kind of see it there, just to come above the one and then going up through those stars and coming up to my cursor right now. And then at the 2400 hour, it's pretty much at my tip of my cursor, so you know that the distance is going to be correct, okay? Because it's right across from these this big star here. We'll keep an eye on this big star. And then right above... So basically that's where it ends up at. Okay, so that'll be our distance, ballpark distance, and we'll get a good idea on that speed. And there it is again. Okay. So remember this is just a ballpark because a duh shortest distance between two points okay basically you'd make a point somewhere along the green line there somewhere along the green line here and yes I didn't draw very straight but no matter what we need this distance okay so pretty much the center of this green line to here is going to be a straight line anyway whether it draws something or not we want a ballpark distance of what we've seen it travel in a 23.29 and almost basically it's roughly a 20 and we'll work off a 24 hour okay right at a 24 hour period of this distance and then we'll take and spin we'll make this smaller because this is all the same resolution size okay and I should be able to uh, I've seen before I haven't made but mess with paint much but I know I can spin when I go to viewer I can view this and I'll be able to spin it okay and I will take and save the picture and I will show you in video and I will spin it because this is the same it'll be the same resolution size when I make it full and actually you're looking at it the same size as long as I have it and I won't mess with the, the zoom at all it'll be at hundred percent okay as long as we see hundred percent will be this it's the same size as the footage and I can't move my I'll try to move this out of the way a little bit you see that they basically this is the same size as our actual picture off the set sheet so we're gonna get a ballpark distance of this travel in the 24 hour period it's, and then we'll get a ballpark speed of how fast that and it basically could be a falling star but no matter what after it's a falling star some point in time it's going to become a comet and we're basically considering it a comet okay okay now I got a technical glitch because basically I've got to match up the numbers on size on zoom so I would agree that I've got the numbers pretty close to the same size and basically I think if we bring this down I can get it right to Nats. We just get the numbers the same size. I got a little bit too big so I've got to make it just a little bit smaller because I didn't get up when we when I took it to paint which I think is very unusual right now is I used to always I've, see I haven't played with paint but and I think I've got since I dropped it down but see I showed you I'm going to show it at hundred percent I thought I could just match up the size so basically we're a little bit smaller than the screen so then that's going to help us out but not by much as you can see the zero is pretty much matching up so then we're going to take it up because we can tilt we can tilt this I think I'm going the right direction see this is what's making me mad I didn't know it would adjust like that on me so 
I've never played with paint before, so I'm just trying to get a ballpark size. So roughly the same number size on I got it on paint. We're going to get a measurement from point A to point B, and it's it's rough, but as you can see, the numbers were pretty much the same size, and if anything, we're just a little bit smaller than these numbers here. Okay, just so the idea that'll rough us out pretty much. Okay, we're just trying to get a ballpark speed here. So exactly without changing any resolution on the size of my screen because I was at 275. So you can possibly do that with your from Java and get the exact 275 and what it is is an inch and three quarters from right here to here at 275 on my screen okay so no matter what we're gonna get an, a measurement from the Sun roughly because so this would be our and it, that is a major size variance in the ballpark that we're getting with our straight line so but we know that the comet that we caught down there traveled from like the point of here to the point of here in 24 hour period in this shot okay okay the current distance from mercury to the sun is point zero three six two three au okay so it's a good enough ballpark for our to calculate our speed okay and basically that converts to 33.68 million miles okay now bust some people's balls that i was talking to in some talk groups lately just because we're men and that's what we like to do is butt gash each other so if he, he sees this video and then everybody else out there too so basically the frequency ballpark okay it's in it would be within 0 0.13 hertz to 0 0.23 hertz to even the spectrum it could be anything from 0 0.13 to maybe 0 0.55 hertz okay but it's going to be putting off that kind of a frequency going through because it's in a vacuum, it's in space, okay? The time of the travel, it would go 11 seconds. If you were talking on the phone, your voice is going light speed through a fiber optic line. 11 seconds of communication, okay? Talking and that distance of fiber on Earth, okay? Light travel in time, it would be the coefficient of T, 7.5 seconds, okay? Because basically, we do our calculation and it's... 7.533 light seconds is ballpark what that object's moving out at okay and basically it's doing 143 I mean 1.403 million miles almost one and a half million miles an hour okay because that's our calculation is basically taking 33.68 million miles and dividing it by 24 hours so it's going one almost one and a half million miles an hour no matter what it's going a million miles an hour okay a million miles an hour ladies and gentlemen now i'm going to give you an idea of what physicists never tell you but corresponding main sequence star properties okay that the idea that a fast uh hyperbolic that means a, uh, a hyperbolic star turns and rotates real fast okay they're scared of a carbon oxygen white dwarf spinning out of control okay which has like something that would be the b5 spectrum class temperature class and 19,000 K uh, what would ever happen if one of them ever spun out of control because they spin so fast they spin like 700 we found one that's the French telescope found one that's been 755 750 times faster spin rotation than the Sun okay so let me give you some kilometer of and here's the sun's mean diameter okay so it could circle this it could circle the sun 3.2 times in an hour okay so we're gonna get you a kill miles a second or an hour so our miles an hour divided by 60 we get 23,383 miles a minute 23,383 miles a minute and there's your kilometers a minute and with those figures I could make you travel hell fast in space because look at your fiber optic that's how f one point 186 milliseconds is all it takes to travel that far in a fiber okay now I did the math myself so no matter what it comes out to 389.7 miles a second or 627.2 kilometers a second that comet's moving so I thought I'd show it to you because no matter what it's a fine because it's faster than anything known to NEO right now that's moving through space that we know of so Jet Propulsion Lab I'm sure they know about it if they don't know about it they know about it now because Bino told you 
Okay, factual, actual. So stick with Beano with all the facts because no matter what, it was moving 389.7 miles a second. Just round it off, 370 miles a second.